Two people were rescued from a burning home in Chester. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Farley. Computer servers at Northern Light Health were reportedly compromised over the weekend, and Maine is getting money as part of a national opioid settlement. Thank you for joining us. We'll have more of these and other stories coming up. First, let's check in with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Devin? Alrighty, happy Monday afternoon. A small crowd advisory is up for some areas until Tuesday morning at around 10 a.m. along the coast. The scale warning will expire at around 1 a.m. So the small crowd advisory will take over once the gale warning drops as wave heights remain just a little bit active. Clouds off to the east for the time being. No, notice some flurries are also developing. We'll be watching for some flurries across the region for the afternoon period today. So don't be surprised if you do notice that with this area low pressure right here that continues to sit and spin in some spots though. So we'll be dealing with that moving forward with a good gusty winds and the clouds and a few flurries as well. Futurecast showing those flurries and clouds and wind this afternoon. We'll have just the clouds coming up later on tonight and we'll hold on to them again as we head towards your Tuesday as well. And sustained winds up to 15 miles per hour are possible in some spots. Some gusts up to 30 miles per hour could also occur. Notice though the pressure gradient will start to, rela to relax a bit as we head towards your Tuesday. So for today though upper 20s increasing clouds and windy and the north wind getting up to about 30 miles per hour. Later on tonight 18 degrees mostly cloudy and windy and that north wind getting up to about 30 miles per hour as we head towards tomorrow middle 30s mostly cloudy and breezy we'll have that north wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour and our early forecast for the rest of the afternoon period a mostly mostly cloudy sky some flurries possible in spots temperatures in the 20s your full five day forecast is coming up Thank you, Devin. Firefighters rescued two people from a house fire in Chester Saturday night. According to reports from the Lincoln Fire Department, crews responded to a single-story structure fire on the Woodville Road in Chester around 8 p.m. Upon arrival, they discovered heavy fire in the front of the home were unable to make entry into the residence. Firefighters were able to locate two occupants attempting to exit the building and brought them to safety. According to the Lincoln Fire Department, the residents were transported to a nearby hospital but are in stable condition. However, the home is a total loss. According to Lieutenant Tim Silver with the Lincoln Fire Department, they were working with a small crew. He said, quote, this fire occurred at the furthest end of our response district and the firehouse was only staffed with four members at the time of our call. Our worst staffing level given our current staffing configuration. This crew defied the odds tonight and the two people are still living because of their willingness to push the envelope, end quote. The cause of the fire is under investigation. On Tuesday, police say a vehicle chase that started in New Hampshire ended with a man being shot and killed by police here in Maine. A deputy was injured in that crash during the chase, and some bystanders were also. Asia Reed spoke with a New Hampshire woman who says her daughter and son-in-law were hit during the chase, and both are at Maine Medical Center in critical condition. New Hampshire couple Danielle Hamelainen and her husband Brandon were in Freiburg Tuesday running errands. Hamelainen's mother, Kathy Rogers Hamelainen, began to worry when she did not hear from them for hours. Danielle and Brandon ran out to the store. They were getting something to make for dinner. Um, after a little time, um, I spoke with my grandson. He's like, I, I don't know where they are. They're not, they're not answering the phone. So, of course, we kept blowing up their phone saying, where are you? Where are you? That's when she learned of an incident taking place in Freiburg, where a Massachusetts man had just led officers on a chase into Maine, where he crashed and then was shot and killed by police. Hamelainen says her daughter and son-in-law happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. They were innocent bystanders T-boned during that chase. I was told they are alive, but they are critical. Two from Conway. Later that night, she found out her daughter and son-in-law were both life lighted to Maine Med, where they were put on life support. They were able to take the breathing tube out um, from Brandon last night, so I was able to just talk with him, so that is a huge sigh of relief. She says they have critical injuries right now. They both have broken ribs, he has a shattered pelvis, they both have brain injuries. Danielle also suffered a broken neck. So many injuries, I just, I, I can't even remember them all. Rogers Hamelainen says they're both still in the intensive care unit and are unsure of the extent of her daughter's brain injury. The important thing is, is they're fighting, fighting for their lives and, you know, with the, the wonderful community and everybody, everybody's been praying for them and sending their love and, and we're going to get them through this. 
An hours long police standoff in Brewer ended with an arrest Friday afternoon. At around 1.20 p.m., Brewer police responded to a call about a road rage incident in which a witness reported that a gun had been displayed. That led police to stop a vehicle on Renfrit Drive off Eastern Avenue. Police say that the driver of the vehicle was not cooperative. Officers learned that the driver also had a history of violence. A decision was made to call two negotiators to the scene. The individual is completely non-compliant. Um, so we, uh, we, we made a plan and we're subsequently able to take him in, into custody at this point. We had to, for the safety of people in the area, had to shut down traffic for a short time. At 3 p.m., police decided to approach the vehicle and take the man into custody by force. 38-year-old Mark Hamblin of Machiasport was arrested and charged with driving to endanger, refusing to submit to arrest, and creating a police standoff. Moffitt says no one was injured and no handgun was found. Brewer PD was assisted by Holden Police, Bangor Police, and the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office. Computer servers at Northern Light Health were reportedly compromised Saturday, resulting in officials taking the patient record system offline. However, officials say patient care has not been affected and all hospitals remain open. According to a Northern Light spokesperson, the hospital has no reason to believe any patient information has been compromised. The hospital has not been contacted by any third party. There is no indication that any of the information is being held for ransom, and they are in full control of their HVAC and security systems. In an update, officials say they expect electronic medical records to be back online today. For more information, visit northernlighthealth.org. $1.8 million is coming to Maine as part of a national settlement with a marketing firm for its role in the opioid epidemic. Attorney General Aaron Fry made the announcement Friday afternoon. He says court filings describe how Publix had contributed to the crisis by helping Purdue Pharma and other opioid manufacturers market and sell their drugs. Attorney General Fry says in terms of the settlement, the company recognized the harm its conduct caused and the agreement gives the hardest hit communities more financial support for treatment and recovery. Fry says, quote, Publis worked to ensure that Purdue's products ended up in more hands and addicting more of our citizens. It profited off the opioid crisis and we now face, and today we are holding them accountable to pay for these harms. Coming up on ABC 7 News at noon, Main Street's Gowhegan is looking for people to be part of a special program. We'll tell you all about it when we return. Toyota trains certified technicians. Is that important? Well, you wouldn't hire just anyone to help you move, would you? <laughs> no. <laughs> of course not. Mm. Not again. Get your Toyota ready for the year's coldest and harshest weather. See your New England Toyota dealer for great service offers to help keep your Toyota dependable and fuel efficient all winter long. Toyota Service Centers. Keep your Toyota a Toyota. Our biggest competitors going back to feeding their chickens antibiotics before they're even sick. You can't solve your problems by throwing antibiotics at them. At Purdue, we promise to stay no antibiotics ever. Purdue. Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain. Roto-Rooter. At Living Innovations, we build community. You can be a part of it. We put supporting people first, and that builds a caring community within our workforce and for the people we serve. Living Innovation supports people with disabilities and has flexible work opportunities available. You could become a shared living provider and work from home, or help support people to be active in the community. To learn more, visit livinginnovations.com and check out our employment and home provider opportunities. Become a part of Living Innovations and be part of a community with a purpose. For the first time, the Maine Association of Broadcasters named a television station of the year for excellence. ABC7 and Fox 22 are honored to be the very first station awarded this achievement. At Warren Financial, your financial goals are our priority. Your financial plan may appear to be all about savings and investing, but in reality, it's about much more. Your life, your family, and your legacy. 
That's why the financial planner you choose is so important. Plan your future with Warren Financial. Visit warrenfinancialplan.com or call 573-1825. Your trusted partner in wealth management. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. A co-op this time of year is not considered an off-season, but rather a slow season. That isn't the case for the Korea Lobster Co-op, even though the January 10th storm destroyed a large part of their infrastructure. Now they work to keep their business afloat while looking for outside help. Our Doug Banks takes us there. Fast action by the hard-working Korea Lobster Co-op crew allows fishermen to keep docking on their wharf after it was severely damaged by the January 10th storm. It only took us a couple days to figure out a way to be operational. The co-op is now on the search for applicable grants and funding as their insurance provider, Liberty, is now bringing in an engineer to assess the damage. Stanley estimates the total cost of damages will be upwards of $300,000. Had they been able to fish that extra week, that's just a few more thousand pounds we could gain. With walls caved in, a metal ramp vanished, ripped away from a wharf that, while usable, remained splintered, forcing them to change their operations, slowing efficiency, and amounting an estimated $45,000 loss in income so far. We have to get repaired. I mean, we have to be able to get our, our machinery down into that building before June, July rolls around. Earlier this week, President Biden announced the December 18th storm as a major disaster. And MEMA states federal funding efforts are underway for those affected by the January 10th and 13th storms. I never thought that that could happen to us here. You know, something like that. But that just shows you, you know, the the It was powerful. In Korea, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Main Street Scout Hegan is looking for entrepreneurs to be part of its 2024 business lab and pitch competition. This is a free eight-week program ending with a pitch contest featuring a $5,000 grand prize. The runner-up receives $1,000. The goal is to provide resources to local entrepreneurs to help start and grow their own businesses, not only in Skowhegan, but across the state. Topics covered include project management, finance and profitability, and risk management. We really want to instill the importance and the value of being able to pitch your business gain those public speaking skills and be able to be confident in approaching others uh, to, in, in speaking to what uh, work you're actually you're, you're doing. Any new or experienced entrepreneur is welcome to apply. Main Street Skowhegan is accepting applications through March 8th. They can be found on skowheganentrepreneurship.com. The class meets weekly Wednesdays in person from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. Now music's biggest night of the year, and like much of the past year, Grammy night belonged to Taylor Swift. Host Trevor Noah kicked off a night that was full of performances, surprises, and history being made. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. Taylor Swift. Music's biggest night was all about music's biggest star. For me, the, the award is the work. All I want to do is keep being able to do this. Celine Dion making a rare appearance to present Taylor Swift with the Album of the Year Award, her record-setting fourth win in the category. Earlier, while accepting another award, she announced a new album. My brand new album <laughs> comes out April 19th. Taylor making history on a night dominated by women. Dua Lipa kicking off the show with a brand new song. Flowers, Mari Cyrus. Miley Cyrus taking home her first Grammy. Started to cry, then remembered, I just won my first Grammy! Letting the crowd know it as she performed her hit song, Flowers, before going on to win Record of the Year. You got a fast car. I want to get to anywhere. And it was Tracy Chapman getting her flowers, performing her 1988 hit, Fast Car, with Luke Combs. In another moving moment of the night, Stevie Wonder performing a duet with the late Tony Bennett. This is mine, you can't take it. And Annie Lennox paying homage to Sinead O'Connor with a haunting rendition of Nothing Compares to You. Nothing compares to you. 
Fantasia bringing the crowd to its feet, celebrating the life of Tina Turner. Billie Eilish took home Song of the Year for What Was I Made For from the Barbie movie. But I wanna try. And then it was time for a different Billy to take the stage, The Piano Man, debuting his first new song in 17 years. Did I wait too long to turn the lights back on? And the legendary Joni Mitchell, making her Grammy debut after winning the Grammy for Best Folk Album. I really don't know life at all. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. With the primary election almost a month away, we asked Maine's Secretary of State if there were any changes voters should be aware of before they cast their ballots this year. There are three new things going into effect this year. One, semi-open primaries where unenrolled voters can vote in the primary election. They can choose the ballot of their choice. Two, we have online voter registration. If you're not registered to vote, you can update or register to vote online. And three, if you're an absentee voter, you always vote absentee and you're a senior or someone with disabilities, you can fill out an application to always have that ballot mailed to you in the future. Bellows wants to remind everyone that absentee ballots will be accepted starting today. You can hand the ballots into your town or city clerk's office, mail them in, or place them in the absentee ballot box in your town. After the break, we've got some good news for parents of teenagers. We'll be right back. RK Variety is more than just a convenience store, with delicious homemade food made fresh daily. We offer hearty meals that don't break the bank. Whether it be our delicious chicken pot pie, one of our many savory soups, or a pizza, you can't go wrong at RK Variety. Looking for a drink after a long work day? RK Variety is an agency liquor store with an impressive selection. RK Variety, more than just a convenience store. We're your neighbor, chef, barista, and friend. Stop by today. Welcome to the Orno Arcade, your local affordable destination. We want to provide you with the best experience we can without costing a small fortune. Our ever popular nine hole black light mini golf course is a huge attraction. Plus we have the best arcade video games to choose from, including both modern and retro games. We have weeknight specials consisting of. We look forward to seeing you soon at the Orno Arcade. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Brandywine Graphics, Coastal Auto Parts, Complete Tire Service, Disconnected Tattoo and Art Company, Osborne's Plumbing and Heating, and Whitney's Family Supermarket. Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. Gun Sports and Brewer knows that for fun, exercise, and meeting new friends, nothing is better than ice skating. Whether it's sailing down the ice, making a great pass, and scoring in a game of hockey. Or the great strength and expression of figure skating. From the youngest child all the way to adulthood, anyone can enjoy the fun of skating. At Gun Sports, we supply the equipment for your skating fun. For great prices, the proper fit, and service after the sale. Shop your locally owned Gun Sports Shop, Greenpoint Road, in Brewer. children were treated on the floor of an overcrowded hospital in the Gaza Strip Sunday following overnight attacks by Israel. 
The airstrikes hit a home and a mosque, leaving 15 people dead, most of them children, and at least 45 others injured. Israel has kept up its aerial bombardment of Gaza, restricting calls from the global community for a ceasefire. Israel's bombardment of Gaza has leveled a large part of the small enclave, displacing 85 percent of its population. The health ministry in Gaza said 127 bodies had been brought to hospitals in the last 24 hours, bringing the overall death toll from the conflict to more than 27,000. The Senate releases a bipartisan bill that includes funding for border security along with funding for Ukraine and Israel. The proposal, which carries a price tag of $118 billion, is the result of months of negotiations and it's facing an uncertain future. Former President Trump, the leading Republican presidential candidate, along with hardline Republicans in Congress, have already condemned the bill. The legislation would reportedly require those crossing the border illegally to be detained or immediately returned to Mexico, and it would set higher standards for asylum. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says he will take steps to hold an initial vote on the proposal this Wednesday. President Biden said in a statement Sunday night he hopes the bill moves quickly through Congress and so he can, quote, sign it into law immediately. A new plan by one state would wipe out a type of debt that can cause extreme hardships. The state of Connecticut wants to eliminate medical debt starting in June for eligible residents burdened by massive medical debt. The new plan would allow families with income up to 400 percent above the poverty line or whose debt is 5 percent of their annual income to have the debt forgiven. The state wants to use money from the American Rescue Plan to remove about $1 billion in medical debt. Connecticut's Governor Ned Lamont says removing the debt would actually pump back millions into the communities as a stimulus. In what be, may be welcome news for parents, fewer teenagers are having sex. ABC's M. Wynn tells us about newly released data that sheds light on what researchers discovered. The teen years can be full of threats of peer pressure and risky decisions, especially around sex. But data shows fewer teenagers are having sex. The National Survey of Family Growth showed that sexual activity in teens ages 15 to 19 in the United States decreased between September 2015 and September 2019. That was mostly driven by a decrease in sexual activity of male teenagers. Nearly 39% of male teenagers reported they ever had sex. This is down from more than 45% in 2002. But more than 40% of female teenagers said they had ever had sex, which is similar to 2002. Use of long-acting reversible contraception like IUD in female teenagers increased from 0.4% in 2002 to 19.2%. Female teens who lived with both parents were less likely to have sex compared to those living with one parent. Those with mothers who had higher levels of education were more likely to have sex for the first time at older ages. Understanding these patterns can help with planning effective health services and health education programs. Having open conversations about sex and birth control with teens can help them avoid risky behavior. With this Medical Minute, I'm M. Wynn, ABC News. When we return, Devin Biggs has your five-day forecast. You're stepping inside from a romp in the snow with the kids. Time to take the chill off with a cup of hot chocolate and a push of a button on a Fujitsu heat pump from Valley Home Services. Skip the worry of heating bills and call or visit valleymain.com today to start saving. Great Scott! This is Green Bear 420 in 2010. What kind of trip is this? I gotta get back to 2023. Wait. It's 2015. So much has changed. In 2023, we had a lot more glass, t-shirts, and novelties. It's going to take a bolt of lightning to get me home. Finally, home at last. Now Green Bear 420, Green Bear Green Care is bigger and better than ever. To be continued. Did you know 80% of women are struggling with hair damage, just like I was? Dryness and frizz could be damaged hair that can't retain moisture. New Pantene Miracle Rescue Deep Conditioner with first-of-its-kind melting Pro-V pearls. Locks in moisture to repair six months of damage in one wash without weigh down. Guaranteed or your money back. For resilient, healthy-looking hair. If you know, you know it's Pantene. It's time to start planning that new home or garage you've been thinking about. 
Hammond Lumber Company is here to help, offering complete building packages with everything you need. With several options on their website and thousands of unique plans in their in-house drawing catalog, Hammond will help you make your dreams a reality. Choose your materials from Hammond's extensive showroom displays, and Hammond will deliver your order from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Start planning your new home or garage at Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. The new Efficiency Main heat pump rebates are here, and they're huge, based on income saved from four to eleven thousand one hundred dollars. And when combined with the new tax credits, the savings are bigger than ever. And Valley gives you your rebate instantly. Call Valley Home Services now for your new Fujitsu heat pump. is urging the public to jump into action and donate after hundreds of Red Cross blood drives were canceled last month due to the inclement weather. There were a record-breaking 534 canceled blood drives nationwide in January. Officials say on average 29,000 units of red blood are needed every day by people. They say a single car accident victim may need as much as 100 units of blood. This year we're kind of in a particularly difficult spot. We've seen a, a significant drop in donations. Uh, to the point that we're 15,000 short nationwide. So that has an impact on our supply to local hospitals. Offering people $20 Amazon gift cards as an incentive when they donate this month. Now let's check your full forecast with Devin Biggs. Devin? Today's full weather forecast is brought to you by Healing Hands Massage in Hamden, providing professional massage services tailored specifically for their clients. Stop by Healing Hands Massage today. You'll thank yourself later. We have advisories to talk about. This right here is a small crowd advisory that's up until about 10 a.m. Tuesday, actually. And then gale warnings are up Monday, at least later on today, until about 1 p.m. or so. So once we get this gale warning out of here, the small crowd advisory will take over at least, at least through parts of Tuesday morning. As wave fights continue to remain busy, out there at around four to ten feet. We'll keep this going through today and at least through parts of 10 a.m., at least or, uh, around 10 a.m. or so as we head towards your Tuesday. But notice so the wave heights are definitely still up there further out towards parts of the ocean where anywhere you see green out there indicating some higher surf. So that's why at least through Tuesday morning we have some advisories up along the coast. But otherwise, though, we have clouds developing. Notice some returns on the radar too. A few flurries could be possible on and off throughout the daytime period today as well, courtesy of that area low pressure there. So that's why why we're seeing the small crowd advisories and gale warnings along the coast because of this area low pressure causing windy conditions and clouds to develop and even some flurries in a few spots as well. So overall, a mostly cloudy sky and a few flurries possible today. By tonight, a mostly cloudy sky again with gusty winds today and tonight. Now by the time we head towards tomorrow, some clouds moving in. The winds will start to relax just a little bit though, but we'll hold on to the clouds through parts of Tuesday night. And then by the time we head towards your Wednesday, we'll start to break these clouds up a bit with a good amount of sunshine that will be seen. But otherwise, so gusty winds on the way for us coming up today, reaching up to 30 miles per hour at times, and that will continue in the parts of tonight as well, but maybe backing off just a little bit to around 25 to 30 miles per hour, and then gusts up to 25 miles per hour will be possible as we head towards the daytime tomorrow as well. Average high temperature, 29 degrees. We'll do about that today in the upper 20s. We have middle 30s Tuesday and also near Wednesday. Upper 30s Thursday. We're back in the 40s Friday. Middle 40s Saturday. And then back in the low 40s again as we head towards your Sunday. So your forecast coming up for today. Upper 20s increasing clouds and windy out there. Some flurries possible as well. With that north wind getting up to about 30 miles per hour. By tonight, upper teens, mostly cloudy and windy out there. With that north wind getting up to about 30 miles per hour at times. Middle 30s tomorrow, mostly cloudy and breezy. North wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's looking at extended forecast brought to you by Healing Hands Massage. Will be mostly sunny on Wednesday with highs in the mid 30s, upper 30s for your Thursday, also with a mostly sunny sky, mostly cloudy on Friday, highs in the low 40s. 40s, maybe my furnace won't run continuously. That's all for ABC 7 News at noon. Thanks for watching. I'm Susan Farley. We'll see you this evening with Beth Jones and Peter Dubois on ABC 7 News at 6. Have a great afternoon.